Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Classic Friday, where we look at a G.I. Joe Classified Series 6-inch action figure. This time we are looking at the Target exclusive Tiger Force David L. Bazooka Katzenbogen action figure. I took a brief look at this figure in my review of the vintage Tiger Force Bazooka, but I wanted to take a closer look at it. Let's start by looking at the packaging. We have the window pane showing the action figure and the accessories. They have started doing plasticless packaging so these plastic window panes will go away. But we still have the window panes so we can see what we are getting here. We have the Tiger Force logo and the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo. This is David L. Bazooka Katzenbog, and we have his full name here, not just his uh, code name, as we sometimes get on these figures. We have the box art, and this art is in a lineless style. It doesn't have traditional line work. It has some shadows and some color blocks. It looks really interesting very unusual style but I think it works. It also depicts Bazooka as being very bulky, very large and muscular, looks like Gronkowski there. This figure is number 54 in the classified series and on the back we have some generic artwork shared by others of the Tiger Force Target exclusive figures. On this side of the box it has these symbols which represent his specialties. This is a pineapple, this is a ballpoint pen, this is a TARDIS, and this means he is not a fan of the Mandalorian. Let's take this figure out of the box and take a look at it. Here is Bazooka out of the packaging. This is Tiger Force Bazooka, meaning he is on the G.I. Joe sub-team Tiger Force and wearing Tiger Force colors. He is mimicking the Bazooka version 2 action figure from 1988, not version 1 from 1985. With these classified figures, we are often getting the Tiger Force or Python Patrol colors before before we get the standard colors, and that is the case with Bazooka. Let's take a look at Bazooka's accessories, starting with his weapon, this anti-tank rocket launcher, which is in an olive drab green with dark gray padding on each side. It has two grips. It has a pistol grip and it has a foregrip here. You should be able to get both of these grips in the figure's hand, but I've had a hard time doing that. It also has this strap for slinging the weapon over the figure's shoulder. This is a very well-detailed accessory. It has a handle. It has a sight here on the front. I have noticed that the connection here at the back for the strap is showing some plastic wear, despite the fact that I've handled it very little. So do be cautious about that. Um, this could be a point where it might break off. This is a good accessory for Bazooka. It's much more substantial than the vintage accessory. This rocket launcher does something the vintage accessory could not do. This back section is hinged, so you can open it up and you can place an anti-tank rocket in the tube. I will demonstrate how to do that in a minute. First, I will caution that this hinge uh, doesn't attach very well. It pops off very easily, so be careful not to lose that or break the peg that connects the back part to the main launcher tube. The next accessory is the backpack. The backpack pegs onto the back of the figure with this peg that goes into the hole in the back. Uh, the figure does not have straps for this backpack like the vintage figure, so apparently the backpack just pins on the back of his shirt. This is an area where where the classified figures could improve on the vintage figure because the vintage figure didn't have straps for the backpack so they could have given him straps maybe that connected to this belt or they could have done some safety pin details so he could safety pin this to his shirt. This backpack mimics the version 2 backpack. It's a dark green. It's a different shade of green. The vintage backpack has more detail than this. It has a canteen and some extra pouches. This does not have a canteen. It just has some pockets with some buckles and it has this hook on the underside which you could use to attach the rocket launcher. The handle of the rocket launcher could attach thusly so he can sling the rocket launcher under the backpack. I do like to have extra ways to store the accessories. That's very good. In addition to that it has the four anti-tank rockets and these are removable. It has four of these rockets. They are all in the same color as the backpack Pack. They are all identical, and they all slot into this rack. As mentioned before, you can load this rocket launcher by swinging the back section open at the peg, and then placing an anti-tank rocket in the back. You can push it all the way in and close it up. So now it is loaded and ready to fire. It does not really fire. There's no spring-loaded mechanism or anything like that, but you can load it and pretend to fire. One downside is that it's not necessarily very easy to get 
the rocket out of there, so I have to resort to tweezers to pull the thing back out. To place the rockets back in the backpack, you just put them in the slot and press down until they go all the way down. Uh, and this is pretty good. It is like the vintage backpack, but it's more functional, and I like having the removable pieces rather than just sculpted on de decorative pieces. That looks really good. The final accessory is the helmet. The helmet is in soft, flexible plastic, and it's in a brown plastic. You can see that on the inside. It has red paint on the outside. It has a brown band and these brown straps on the side. And this is a good-looking helmet. It's meant to be similar, at least, to the version 2 helmet. The version 2 helmet was in this caramel brown color. This is in red. With the accessories out of the way, let's take a look at the articulation. He has articulation that is almost the standard articulation for classified figures, but it's slightly different. He does have the usual head turn and his head will tilt up and down. Uh, he's got articulation at the neck and at the base of the head, so good range of motion on the head. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders, so he can move at the butterfly joints a bit. That's kind of tight. Not too bad on mine, but some of these butterfly joints are very tight indeed. Uh, he can move his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder. He has a swivel at the top of the bicep, so he can swivel his arm there. He has double jointed elbows. He has swivels at the wrist, and he has up and down hinges at both wrists. At the chest is where he has slightly different articulation than most classified figures. Instead of having a large hinge at the rib cage, he has a cut at the chest with this ball and socket joint so he can move at the chest there. I assume they did this so it would not interfere with the printed number 14 on his chest, but it still does interfere a bit. The ab crunch is not quite what you would get with the big hinge at the rib cage. He has articulation at the waist so he can twist and move at the waist a bit. He can do the splits. He can move his leg at the hip forward and back a little bit, not as much. He has a cut at the thigh so he can twist at the thigh. He has double jointed knees. He has a cut at the boot so he can twist at the boot. He has hinged and rocker ankles. Now we can look at the details on the figure, and the head has dark hair and a dark Tom Selleck mustache. That's very similar to the vintage figure. This is a nice update of that vintage bazooka head sculpt. It really does look like him. He has his number 14 football jersey with a red collar, a red number 14 outlined in blue, and red and blue stripes on the sleeves. Nothing on the back, no number 14 on the back. The printing is on the front. The vintage figure also had a number 14 and it did not have the number on the back so that matches what they have on the classified figure but the colors are updated. On the vintage figure he had orange and green on the jersey and he has red and blue on the classified figure. The red and blue colors are appropriate because this makes it a vintage New England Patriots away jersey. Unlike the vintage figure this figure is very muscular. Large sculpted detailed muscles. He may be built like Gronkowski, but he is wearing the jersey of Steve Grogan from the New England Patriots, who was their quarterback for a long time. Uh, and it was a hero of Ron Rudat, who designed the original figure back in 1985. Most of the other details are very similar to the vintage figure. He has this brown belt with pouches and a silver belt buckle, but unlike on the vintage figure, this is a separate piece. It's not really intended to be removed, uh, but I like it as as a separate piece, it adds a bit of dimension to the figure. The lower half of the figure has dark green trousers with yellow tiger stripes painted on. That is very much in keeping with the tiger force colors. He also has pockets on the outside of his legs. He has textured legs. The, the trousers on the legs are textured. That's really nice. Great detail on those. And he has brown boots. And those boots have some straps uh, across the front and that also is similar to the vintage figure. Looking at the figure overall, I'd say it's just so-so. It's not my favorite classified figure, but it's one of the better ones. It certainly is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, and certainly it does evoke bazooka. I mean, this looks like bazooka. It's a very good head sculpt. It's a very good uniform. It has some improvements on the vintage figure. First with the accessories, the beefed-up rocket launcher looks way better. The vintage rocket launcher looks very small in comparison 
Wilson. And the removable rockets on the backpack, that's a great bonus. Another great improvement on the 1988 figure is the update of the colors. Now with the red and blue on the white jersey, it keeps the team colors from the version 1 figure, and I do like that. I prefer that over the vintage orange and green. The biggest missed opportunity for this figure is not giving Bazooka some straps for the backpack. It is not clear how the backpack sticks to his shirt, either with safety pins or magnets or something. That was my review of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Tiger Force Bazooka. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for your patience as I try to get more videos out. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. The best way to support the channel and make sure these videos keep coming is through Patreon. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back soon with more vintage and classified G.I. Joe. I'll see you then, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.